Hello everyone. Thanks for your patience. After that amazing interview, we're back with some more gaming fun. Up next is Ultima 6. I'm your host, Sergeant Mug, and our runner today for Ultima is gonna be Cloudy Shoe. Um, please go ahead, introduce yourself. Um, tell us about what we're what we're looking forward to here with this randomizer. Hi, I'm Cloudy Shoe. Um, this is Ultima 6 Rando, um, developed uh, by Squibbies. Today we're gonna uh, have a little bit of chaos. Uh, people are gonna uh, NPCs in some areas are gonna be shuffled around, and we're gonna have to all sorts of um, very virtuous things. I'm looking forward to it. I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen, so I'm excited to uh, experience this with you. <laughs> there is a few um, incentives that we had going um, to start off with the run. I know we had the sprite selection, um, and the winner of that one was going to be the ghost. And then we also had to name the the file name or the hero name, right? Uh, yes. Is now a good time to go ahead and enter that? Uh, yes, it is. Alrighty. This one is a little complicated. I'm gonna have to, like, read it to you, like, by character, okay? okay. <laughs> it's gonna be tilde, left parenthesis, lowercase o, yep. underscore, uppercase o, yep. right parenthesis, tilde. Yep. There we go. <laughs> and that's it. So it's a kind of a tradition that we use uh, little faces for our names. So it's gorgeous. We'd, we'd go with that. <laughs> so uh, awesome it, selection and time starts. I'm assuming if you if you go from here, uh, we'll bring up this screen here, and time starts uh, when I select the text speed. Take it away. All right, in three, two, one, go. All right, so we're starting in a random starting position here. And this is the town of Yu. Um, this is one of the virtue towns. So in um, uh, the Ultima series, there are eight virtues. Uh, the virtue for this town is justice. Um, this here is uh, Janna, who's a druid, who is an invitable party member. And these are, uh, that is a, a one of the places that uh, items are shuffled. So uh, she has the odd cheese, which is how we'll, we're going to recruit another party member later. So, um, However, here, uh, we're going to be talking to a lot of party members, so a lot of them aren't going to stay around very long. So we're going to say, thanks for the cheese, and um, why don't you stay here? Uh, the other thing we had there was a, um, under a potted plant, there was a, um, I think it was just some oil this time. But by default, it was one of the items we'll be looking for, which is um, a rune. So each virtue has a rune and there's a shrine. And in the uh, vanilla game, what you do is you get the runes to get the moonstones um, so that we can throw a book in a void. So the items we're going to be looking for today are, um, we need to beat the game, are eight moonstones, a vortex cube, a human lens, and a gargoyle lens. Um, so, okay, yeah, just your everyday, like, common items, right? <laughs> uh, yes. better you sound louder to me all right 
Okay, so one thing that's in this game is a karma system. So um, when you do good things, you get um, you increase your karma, and when you do bad things, you decrease your karma. So one of the things we're going to do to um, increase our karma here is um, this is uh, Karina. That's right. And um, if we say that she's a good dancer, we get some karma. And um, that'll help us so that we can misbehave later. Uh, Blaine here doesn't have anything useful. Um, they have a map piece, which is part of a quest that we have turned off because uh, there is a um, time constraint <laughs> for marathon runs, and that quest is very long. <laughs> so uh, one thing karma affects is the selling price of items. So um, the higher karma you have, the, the more you can sell things for, and the cheaper things are when you buy them. Um, but uh, as your karma goes down, things can get real expensive. So, um, we are going to, uh, we do some nice things so that, um, on occasion, we may need to steal some things or, um, uh, and that will decrease our karma. And, uh, so we do some good things to kind of offset it, which is kind of a theme in a lot of, um, in some of the Ultima speedruns in general. Uh, so this is a strategy that we call Bully the Shopkeeper. Um, so if you just keep, keep holding right here, the shopkeeper will eventually randomly go right um, because you need to get to that switch. Um, the other option you have is to come back at night when the shopkeeper's asleep. Um, or to get Sherry the mouse to do it for you. Um, but in this case, uh, there we go. Because you can only use things that are like one square around you. And then we got the Rune of Humility, which is kind of a fetch quest because it means you can go, now we can go to the Shrine of Humility and find out what the item is there. Uh, and Blaine, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go. And, um, so normally in this game, you start with, um, three other companions. You start with a party of four, you can get up to six. One of the things you can do in the randomizer is start with, uh, fewer or no companions. So, um... In some situations, it can be very beneficial to only have um, to have as few people as possible um, because there might be uh, things around that you'd like to avoid with like invisibility potions and when you only need one of those, it's a lot nicer. So we're going to buy a boat here and um, people who have seen Ultima 6 speed runs will know that the boat, when you get into a boat, there's a jaunty tune that plays. It's very upbeat. Oh, I'm so psyched. <laughs> so, uh, right now, we need to get a keyword because the dialogue in this is keyword based, and you have to get keywords from certain NPCs so you can talk to people about different things. So, this person is who we call Fake Lord British. They tell you that they're the real Lord British, but what I care about here is this rune keyword. So otherwise I have to go into the castle and talk to the real Lord British before coming out here. So here we're gonna lie to a child twice. Because um, uh, this child has, in vanilla the game, she has a rune. Here she has a any number of items. Um, but if we say, oh, you know, she's studying to be a bard. So she says, I'm starting to be a bard. Will you come back and listen to me someday? And we say yes, which is a lie. We're never coming back. Uh, <laughs> but our karma increases by the, for that by 10. Uh, and then we ask about the room. And she says, well, you should really ask my parents. 
And so we just exit the conversation. And she said, did you ask my parents? And I say, yes. <laughs> uh, and she gives us some trash, um, but we lose 10 karma. So we came out equal in that case. And uh, while the bards are there in the music hall, we're going to go to their house and see what they have there. Because they have some items. And they have a moonstone, which is one of eight that we'll need, and a key. So there's a lot of times when I'll open a chest, see what's in it, but I won't take it. And that's because many chests are considered stealing. And so um, for items that you need to beat the game, um, they are never considered stealing. Um, but in other cases, other items are stealing. So that moat there um, is, you know, see the front gate here is locked, but if you have a boat, you can just get in the side door. So uh, now we're gonna, we're here in the castle and there's a lot of stuff. Everything in the castle um, we can take for free. And um, Lord British hasn't told us this yet, but they he tells you at some point. Um, uh, but anything in the castle is free for the taking, so we take a whole bunch of it, and that is the Rune of Spirituality, which is will get us another check here. And then get some other items. This bag here is always full of reagents which you need for spell casting in this game uh, we're gonna go into lord bridges's closet uh, and just has a loot oh and some powder kegs uh we do uh like to blow things up yeah so, nothing just like keeping some bombs in your closet <laughs> yeah so um the other thing in this game is um Anything that you can open with a key, you can just blow up. So most of the time, we just blow it up. So uh, there are keys in the game, but you know you have to like talk to people and or go out of your way to get them. Um, so the oh, another stop here is you can see this mouse here. That is Sherry the mouse who can talk. And that uh, cheese that we got earlier is Sherry's favorite type of cheese. And if you give her the cheese, she will come along and help you. Um, there is one item location that you can only access with Sherry. Um, the other benefit of Sherry is possibly due to an oversight. Sherry does not affect your karma at all, so Sherry can steal whatever she wants. And it I, will... I too could be motivated to do errands if you gave me some cheese. <laughs> uh, so in um, the PC game, Sherry is like a full party member. Um, however, because of limitations of the console port, uh, she's more of an item this version uh, but she still contributes greatly um, so we are now uh, so one thing I used earlier that you may have seen is this moon orb and what this does is uh, it can warp you to a bunch of locations um, so it's very useful traveling around. Uh, there is an option in the randomizer to randomize the locations it takes you to. Um, but for time reasons, we're not doing that today. Uh, so in Scar Bray here, um, uh, we're going to get attacked by a fellow skeleton, apparently. Um, and let's see how this goes. Oh. All right. So, we died, and what happens when you die is, essentially, you cast the spell Help, which takes you back to where you started from and heals you and resurrects your party. 
We're gonna go right back here though, and we're gonna get away from that skeleton. Uh, so Scarab right here is the first town where we have NPCs randomized. Um, so this setting that we have on um, randomizes NPCs within the same town that they're in. Um, there is a, oh, there's a ghost. There is a ghost that haunts this town. It's um, you. <laughs> and me. Um, oh, there's two. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in this case, uh, you are not anyone I need to talk to, are you? Uh, no, you're just like an innkeeper. Okay. So, um, you can randomize the uh, NPCs like everywhere throughout the game. Um, uh, which uh, is fun, but it takes a long time. <laughs> Unless, um, uh, and you really have to know um, schedules, um, which we have, or we're developing a tool for, but, because um, NPCs in this game have schedules based on the time of day, um, and in some cases, what day it is. Um, so, got the Rune of Valor there. Uh, so for this, we um, just randomize um, NPCs in some areas. Um, we, who we pick, just picked up is Shamino, um, who is one of the starting party members in the base game. Um, it is also one of the several... Um, we're just getting all of the runes today. Justice. Um, Shamino is also one of the characters based on, um, uh, like, the creator and, like, lead designer of the Ultimate Games, Richard Garriott, I believe. Oh, that's cute. Um, I believe Shamino is based on, like, a DD and d character of his or something. Um, but there are, I believe, at least three um, characters in the universe that are somewhat based upon him and uh, so I think others are based upon some of his friends so where are we? we are in... okay so we're gonna take a quick trip around here um, and we're gonna see if we can't make use of some of these rooms we picked up uh, so this is the shrine of spirituality um, so if we use the Rune of Spirituality, you can see it's kind of glowing, and there's a picture of, like, what's supposed to be a Moonstone on there, um, which is what you would get normally in the game. But today we found a Moonstone, but not the right one, or the, the one that would normally be here. This is the Moonstone of Honesty. And if you meditate at a shrine, you can level up, uh... And you can also receive a karma bonus. Um, so these gates here are based on the position of the moons in the game. So um, it looks like the tracker is working now. So you can see the, the moons moving around. And they change about every hour. And the highest moon in the sky determines where these blue gates take you. And I believe this will take us to Honesty, um, which we can't do anything with, um, except for apparently get attacked. Um, let's see how this goes. We may die. Looks like we'll probably die pretty quickly. Or maybe we'll, maybe we won't make it through. In either case, we can be. Oh. There we go. I saved. In either case, we can be quickly back uh, on our way by once again using the moon orb. Um, and I don't think that I've checked to see what our pal Shamino brought us yet, but uh, we'll get there. What do we have? We have uh, humility. Should work. 
so um, there's enemies often at our there's enemies at all these shrines and in some cases they are hostile but if you're quick enough <laughs> and funny enough that is honesty where we just came from so we can go right back there and grab whatever is on the um, oh and there's some wolves coming for us so we'll see if we can get out of here quick enough and we did let's see if we can uh, check the item before we get attacked and it's an invisibility ring which is not a progression item but can be very useful Justice and Valor. So um, the um, these shrines are all have a virtue attached, and in the uh, way that you uh, uh, the moon orb locations, the shrines are one clock one position clockwise past where the town of that virtue is. So that is a way um, that we can remember how those work. And this is that. And we got a sextant, which we stole one earlier. But a sextant is useful to tell your, your position in the world, um, which there are a couple items that are hidden at um, some very specific coordinates. And um, the only way um, to know exactly where you are is to have a sextant. Uh, valor and Justice is the one we have not gone to yet. And this is, unless we get another rune here, we'll be back onto uh, a different path. Okay. So we got a yellow potion, which is a healing potion. Which is useful, but not particularly exciting. It's a bold move of this game to make the health potions be yellow. Aren't they usually red? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the red potions in this game are, um, dispel, like, poison or, and stuff. Uh, and in, I believe it is... Uh, Ultima 8, um, red poison, uh, I think red is still health, but if you're at full health and you use a health potion, it damages you. Oh. But Ultima 8 is kind of, is just that kind of game. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna take care of a couple overworld checks here. We've got, um... There's a fighter that lives a little bit off, away from town, and we're going to check that out. Uh, let me cast light here, uh, so we can see things a little better. We should be coming up on it right here. Here we are, and there can be some enemies around here. Most of the spawners... Um, Gargish Lens, all right, that is one of the items we need, and now we get to see uh, the way I have this set up. There we go. So we can mark off the Gargish Lens by um, uh, going into an Excel spreadsheet named Book One, <laughs> because... Uh, our theme today is chaos. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of threw together some stuff for tracking purposes. Uh, for the stream side, um, the tracker stuff that I'm using is um, takes up multiple screens <laughs> and does not translate well to stream. Okay, so we're headed over to um, Cyclops Cave named such because in the game um, 
It is where there are many Cyclops, but today is apparently Slime Cave. Um, and they weren't too happy to see me, so we might come back to that in a little bit here. Uh, let's see here. Let's mark off that check. And we're going to go down to the town of Trinsic, which is the town of Honor. And the first thing we're going to do is break into someone's home, which is always an honorable thing to do. Yeah, I mean, this really, like, part of their principles, basically, right? <laughs> and we're going to find one of the two spells that are needed to uh, beat the game. And we're going to find out which one we got. Um, so, uh, I need to do some inventory management while we're here, because I've got all sorts of stuff all over the place. Put all of our spell ingredients in the bag. So they take up a lot of space. We'll probably throw some potions in there too. Because our spell actually ended up in there because there wasn't enough room in our regular inventory. Uh, but we got the spell of unlock. Alright, which um, in this flag set, um, no pun intended, unlocks uh, a lot of checks. Uh, more so than the other spell, though it uh, the, the other spell, the spell field, also unlocks several things. Uh, and as you can see, um, NPCs are randomized in this town as well, because this is Harold. Oh, okay, the horseshoe maker, who normally does not stand around outside. Uh, this is the mayor's house. Uh, the mayor has a chest behind a locked door, um, and whenever there's a lock, we like to just blow the door up. Yeah, yeah, uh, yet another honorable decision to make. Yeah. Uh, let's see, we're gonna steal that ring there, which loses us a point of karma, but we've built up quite a bit so far. And this book here will tell us the location of the buried treasure. So, I need to uh, put this in my notes. 351 South 113 West. Um, uh, and, folks, you know, if you want to find some treasure of your own, you do not have to blow up any doors or break into any mayor's home. Um, any dollar amount donation is going to enter you to win several awesome prizes one of which that we've got up for to win today is a, a journal that's destiny hunter themed so you could track all of your randomizer progress in this nifty little journal all you got to do is just hit exclamation mark donate and donating any dollar amount at any point today is going to enter you to win several prizes including that journal picked up uh, Dupre, um, who just had some mutton. Uh, Dupre is also one of our, um, the vanilla um, companions that you start with, uh, who's in several of these caves. Uh, Shamino, we, I don't think we had checked that before, but Shamino just had some gems, which uh, using a gem can get you like a very pixelated world map. Um, which I don't know how useful it actually is, but uh, you can also use, uh, I think it's five of them, to build a glass sword. Uh, which a glass sword will do 255 damage, but will break uh, on the first use. Uh, so here we are in the town of Paws, uh, which is one of the towns that's not connected to a virtue um, and it is one of the uh, towns that uh, the vanilla speed run is based around because it's not super convenient to get to um, so we have um, a method where we use one of the in-game warping methods to 
try to uh, get back here very quickly later in the game because we have to go here twice. Uh, we're going to camp for an hour, which is going to pass some time because NPCs have schedules and I need to talk to this NPC and they were at lunch. All I need is to know that Thindle's name is Thindle um, because Arbeth down here uh, oh, I didn't buy any. Well, Arbeth here is going to make us some spider silk at some point. Um, yeah. He's going to make us some thread out of spider silk. But I forgot to bring the spider silk with me. Uh, but he won't talk to you unless uh, you uh, mention that you already talked to Thindle because uh, he's kind of a little um, shy around new people which is relatable oh we got the human lens which is our second lens uh, let's see there there we go um, we also got the Gargish text which was in a chest up there and that um, so the main plot of this game is that humans and gargoyles are um, in conflict. Um, and the Gargish text here will basically teaches us how to speak Gargish just by like reading it once, which is great. Um, but they're specifically in conflict because two games ago in um, Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. Um, the um, Avatar retrieved the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. Um, and it turns out that, um, that that caused some problems for um, the gargoyle world. Like, it's kind of literally like ripping apart. Um, so the gargoyles aren't too happy about it. Um, and, uh, the, uh, so Lord British, like, called us back into Britannia. We're actually from Earth. Um, but, um, we're back to help out again so that uh, to clean up the mess we made in a previous game, which is kind of a running theme throughout some of the Ultima series. Um, so at the end of the game, we're actually going to throw a book into the void um, because uh, we're, uh, we're adults and we can buy our own pizza, so we don't need the... Uh, what was it? Book it program? <laughs> we don't need to read books just to get pizza anymore. This is inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, if you have any announcements, we're going to make a walk that we just made so that we can get some silk thread made. Sure, sure. Um... I love how we're being the ghost sprite. It's very, you know, Halloween-y of us. And on that note, we do have another bid war active for a game coming up later this afternoon, which is going to be the demo of Little Kitty Big City. You get to choose the hat that the little kitty is going to wear. Currently in the lead is no hats, only cats. But in my opinion, it's Halloween, you know? I want to get like a little costume for the kitty. So there's a lot of really adorable sounding options. There's an apple hat, a frog hat, a bunny hat, and a ladybug hat. Um, personally, I think a cat with the little bunny ears would be really cute. So please feel free to get your donations in um, to select a little Halloween costume for the kitty. Again, that's coming up later this afternoon. So right now is the perfect time to get those donations in to get your favorite choice in the lead. So if you can see here, the in-game time is um, currently at uh, 16, 1700, which I believe is when this NPC goes to bed, yes. They go to bed real early, so we're just going to sleep for a while, um, which is going to press time, 
Um, luckily, this NPC also gets up fairly early. Um, so I believe we just need to make it to 7 a.m. Um, and then we can get some silk thread made and we can progress our way to building a hot air balloon, which is the um, fastest way to do like land travel. Uh, so with 20 gold and some, th and some uh, thread here, or some spider silk, we're going to have the silk thread. So we're going to head off to the town of New Magentia, which is an island in the middle of the ocean, where often we get attacked. Ooh, lightning. That is not great. Let's see. If I can stay far enough away, it's okay if my friends die. If I die, um, we get sent back to the start. But if my friends die, it's fine. Um, let's. Do I have an abyss ring, don't I? Let's put that on. Alright, so. Uh, in the. Um, the base game, these are sheep. Um, but we have all the enemies randomized so today they are very much not sheep um, though that wouldn't necessarily matter because enemy um, AI and abilities are also currently randomized which means that um, uh, sheep could like have very powerful spells big weapons and stats and just one shot you anyway. Uh, so the main thing we need to do here in New Vigentia is a like quest where you go around and talk to everyone. Um, and in this case, this is Katrina, who is like another companion option who will have uh, nothing good for us except for things that we can sell. Um, but we're going to need to talk to just about everybody else in town so that we can get the item that is here. Uh, and this is one of the towns where we've shuffled the NPCs. So we have to figure out where everyone is first and then talk to them in the right order. Um, this is... Oh, forgive me for not introducing myself. I am Connor Starfalcon. Hello? <laughs> yes. Uh, Connor is uh, also a fisherman, so he's going to tell us where the item in the ocean is hidden. Two, three, four, west. Connor with one N, two is bold. Yes, and uh, um, there was a version of this game that was ported to the um, FM Towns, which I think was a like Japanese console in like the late '90s. Um, but that one has voice acting um, from just like the game developers. Um, oh my goodness, that's so cool! <laughs> and so um, usually on my stream when we talk to Connor, I play the. Um, the clip of uh, that line being read. The oh, <laughs> the uh, oh yeah. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Connor Star Falcon. <laughs> BRB. I'm joining a game dev team just so I can provide voice acting to the characters with no experience. All right. So this, I believe, yep, should be Antonio. I'm gonna ask Antonio about the rune. He said I left it with William. Okay, so now I need to remember where William was. I think William was in... I think I already talked to William. This is Dunbar, I believe, yes. And we're just gonna, you know, ignore the dragons. They can't, 
they can fo- they'll follow you because that's how the AI is programmed, but they they um, won't attack you if you're still invisible. So this is William, who's actually where he normally is. Um, and he says, oh yeah, I gave that rune to Arndir, who is the shepherd, who today is apparently a dragon shepherd. Um, and they're not going to attack me, but they're going to block me off. So let me see if I can get around. And he's also in his default spot for today. He said, yes, I gave it to Connor. So they're going to go back to Connor, who's apparently taking some time off from fishing to run the tavern. And Connor is going to tell us uh, the rune. I gave it to Charlotte yesterday. Okay. Where did Charlotte end up? I don't think... Because this was Antonio. Oh, Charlotte must be at the docks. Charlotte is a weaver. And I believe her name is actually Charlotte Weaver. Yes. <laughs> so that cloth we got earlier. Um, we are going to get that made into... Or the thread we got. We get made into cloth. Um, so that we can... We're one step closer to making a balloon. A hot air balloon. But she tells us that Dunbar is the one who now has the room. And Dunbar is up here in Charlotte's shop. And Dunbar is going to... Uh, first, we're going to buy a fish, which will come into play later. Uh, and Dunbar says, I gave it to Antonio a few minutes ago. Who, and Antonio is where we started this whole thing off at. So I believe I haven't I haven't ran the PC version, but the PC version um, has uh, a few different mechanics um, where you can like attack just about anyone, and all we got was a useless ring. Um, but I believe in the PC game they just um, kill the mayor and take the rune off them. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that on the Super Nintendo version. So, um, we had to go the long way. Uh, we're going to head back to uh, the town of Britain, which is where uh, Lord British lives and we were earlier. And the reason we're going to do that is because we have the unlock spell. And uh, there is a bank in the town of Britain uh, that has some log chests in it. Uh, so we're going to do a, um, you know, just a midday bank heist. Oh, yeah, right. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not over still the, the sheep all being dragons. <laughs> so uh, in the... The Avatar, especially after the events of Ultima 4, uh, the quest of the Avatar, where um, the Avatar achieved their Avatarness, um, they are supposed to be like the epitome of virtue, of specifically the eight virtues. And in that game, you have to build up um, all of those virtues. Um, so that uh, to become the avatar, um, but in classic um, speedrun style, um, we actually, even in that speedrun, we are very unvirtuous on the way to becoming like ult the ultimate form of virtue. So, uh, oh, that's got- where the name is from. <laughs> yeah. So we got a, another uh, moonstone there. We also um, found some swamp boots, which swamp boots mean that you can walk through swamps and not get poisoned. In the vanilla speed runs, um, one of our friends starts with swamp boots, and we promptly steal them and um, uh, 
possibly our friend meets a less than um, unintentional fate at some point. <laughs> Look, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? <laughs> earlier didn't we yes you might be wondering why would we have gone out of our way earlier to buy a log well we're gonna find out we are going to go to the town of minnick um, and the town of minnick is another place where um in the vanilla game uh you have to go all around to get the uh, room from the town. Uh, in this case, we know what we need. So we're gonna talk, this is the um, Aaron who runs the sawmill. And Aaron just made up, cut that board that we bought earlier into logs. And we're gonna kind of do this quest in reverse order. We're gonna build the thing that we need. And then we're going to go to the person who asks us for it. But first, we're going to stop in Town Hall. Um, we're going to use our unlock spell um, to see what they got hiding in here. There's some money. We don't really care about that. But they have, oh, the Vortex Cube. And that is the last of the spreadsheet items here. The Vortex Cube is what we're going to store all of our um, the Moonstones in so that we can um, banish a book into the void. So it is one of the items that we need. So now all we actually really need are several more Moonstones. Uh, this is where Julia has her shop. She is going to, hopefully, I think she comes back to work at, or comes back to here at 1600. No, let me check. Uh, let's see, Finnick, Julia, 1700. Possibly. She's taking a long lunch break. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah, and then she's back to the shop. Okay. Uh, can I? Okay, one of the things that we have that is nice in the randomizer as well is that you can camp anywhere that there's enough space for it. Um, in the base game, um, you can only camp, you can't camp in town. And what's in town is like not very well defined. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't like often make sense like why is this town and that's not town but we got we got rid of that for or we have an option to get rid of that for the randomizer um and especially in something where npcs are shuffled and you really need their sketch to um you need to be able to advance time to get around their schedules um it is very useful to be able to camp in a lot more places. So uh, Julia took those boards and made us a set of pan pipes. Um, and then we invited her to our party and she gave us the rune of honor. And then we kicked her out because that's all we need. And um, I think in the PC version, once you, she leaves your party, you can't invite her back because she's mad at you or something. But that is not Yeah, can't case. imagine why. <laughs> so this here, there's a there's a chest in here, but um, this shop here is also a basket weaver, the Moonstone of Sacrifice, who, if we find the balloon plans, can weave us a basket for our hot air balloon. Uh, we're gonna go down here for a moment and just pop into this shop where they're probably closed for the night. We might need to go to a different shop later. Hopefully, uh, we 
to find Gweno, who is uh, a bard who's going to teach us a song on our panpipes. Uh, she might actually be in the guild hall. Now that I think of it. Because this here is the guild hall. And the quest for this town is to um, learn a song on the panpipes um, for the guild. I don't know what their title is. Uh, the like leader of the artisan guild in town will then um, hand over uh, the town's room. Uh, so we're going to pass some time here. I don't think they come back until the morning. But um, after that, we're going to hear the song Stones a couple times, uh, which is a song that um, Gweno, the party member we just picked up, uh, wrote. Uh, Gwen Gweno is also um, married to one of the uh, default starting party members, Yolo, who is also a bard. Uh, let's see, do we have, there we go, there is, uh, so we're gonna ask about, hey, can I get that rune? You need to be a guild member. How are you gonna do that? And then he's gonna tell you that. And now we can talk to Gweno and say, hey, I need to learn this song. And you can learn the song. And this is where in the speed run, if you mash through that, you can like do that twice and lose a lot of time. Because <laughs> you already have to play it two times. And it is, uh, it's like 10 seconds or something. That's a total rookie mistake when you're button mashing and then ac accidentally activate it again. Yeah. So Gwena was also a party, like a potential party member. Uh, in this case, um, she just has some torches, which aren't all that useful. Um, let's see here. So, got some more swamp boots. Let's give that to one of our other party members. And we're gonna head out here and we're gonna use that rune we just got the rune of honor. First, we're gonna kick out Gweno because we're gonna have more people we're gonna need to invite to the party. Uh, we can move now. This vortex cube is like a storage device, but it only will take moonstones. But we can put our moonstones in there for safekeeping. Because otherwise they can get lost sitting around. So honesty. So the moonstones are if you've noticed, there are different phases of the moon. And the um, they correspond to the moon phase where a moon gate will take you to that shrine. Um, which is, uh, there's a uh, randomizer setting to not start with the moon orb. And the moon gate travel can be a lot more useful in that situation. And it is one of the things that we use in um, the Vanilla speedrun uh, to save a, probably a couple minutes um, to get back to a place that doesn't have a um, normal fast travel location nearby. Um, we have unlock, so let's do a little light gray robbing. How does that sound? For... Hey, I mean, that sounds exactly in line with everything else we've been doing. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to head to the town of Moonglow. Um, first, we're just going to do some 
some regular robbery. We're just gonna go into the music hall here. And there is a hidden wall, or a, like, a false wall. And there's just some mutton in there. Uh, we will take a invisibility thing, though. Uh, so we got that. Uh, so I, the, the avatar here is a ghost because it is Halloween. Uh, my party members are ghosts because they are currently dead. Uh, well, they fit right in. <laughs> so we're going to go down here into these crypts. And this green here is swamp, which will no, uh, normally poison you, but we have swamp boots. So it doesn't. Um, so, uh... When you uh, are down here, there's all sorts of stuff in these crypts, and it is not considered stealing. So, you know what I might not have that we need for this situation is explosives. All right, let's... Let's get some explosives. Because normally, the, the point where I normally get free explosives, we kind of noped out of earlier. Um, but I think now um, we are better equipped. And if I find a place where uh, I can use this warp, there we go. So we're gonna go back to our friend Cyclops Cave, which today is full of slimes. Um, and there is a item in there, but there is also um, a lot of powder kegs for the taking. And we happen to have some more things we need to blow up. So we will happily take them. Uh, so slime sightings here um, I'm going to put on an invisibility ring and the thing with invisibility rings and all invisibility items in this game is that every step you take they have a chance to break so they can last one steps or the entire game there's literally no range no oh my gosh <laughs> It is. It can be one step, it can be forever. It's just every step you take, there's a chance. That's I don't hilarious. know exactly what the chance is, but in that case, that's just a ring. We might actually have to kill some slimes just to get them out of our way. But I'd rather avoid it if I can, because I'll have to kill all of them. But it looks like I don't have it. Oh! A choice. I hit the wrong shortcut. Because another thing we have in the randomizer is uh, some extra button functionality. Uh, because in much of the game, the um, like A and B are the only buttons used. So we were able to map some of them to uh, other functions. So like right will bring up the attack menu and L will bring up the spell menu, uh, which you normally have to go through the uh, full menu for. Uh, but unlike the PC version, you can't just leave combat. You either have to, you either get defeated, or um, you um, have to kill everything <laughs> or get far enough away. And so, further down in this cave, uh, we need to go to the bottom floor, which is the next one. Um, so there's some rope if you need it. We stole some earlier, so we're fine. But there, the Cyclops that normally inhabit this cave 
also have a lot of explosives. And we just happen to vi really like explosives, but I can't carry them. Let's see. My, um, normally it would spill over into my, um, uh, oh, I should use that sword instead of this mace. Oh, no, the mace is the same. Oh, uh, it's sp spill over into my party member's inventories, but they are currently dead. Um, however, I can give things to my party members' ghosts, and they will take them, but they can't, like, auto-get things. So we're just gonna s free up some carry capacity here so it can get a few more explosives. Because, um, we got things that need to be blown up. I don't make the rules, but I do enjoy, um, that things need to be blown up. So we're gonna go back into the crypts. And uh, we're gonna do that, of course, through the secret entrance in the tavern. Uh, we can take off our invisibility rings, which have done us well, uh, but we don't want them to break if we can avoid it. Um, you can get a key for this door, but um, really, why would you? Uh, uh, when we can blow it up. I mean, yeah. we like we know the drill by now. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe there. Well, uh, besides the entrance to the castle, which I think you have to pull the lever for, um, almost all doors can either be blown up if they're just a regular locked door. Oh. Or you can use magic to unlock a magically locked door. We'll pick up an insurance. So this is Bathen's tomb. Um, and they have the balloon plan, which uh, we'll definitely take. Um, normally, you actually get that off um, like a different person who died in a different dungeon. But... Um, in this case, it is Baven, who has been dead for quite a long time, I believe. Uh, hey, we got lucky in these spawners didn't spawn anything. And that is gems. Oh, we'll take that fish in case we still need one. So, uh, we can... Oh, we're going to need to unlock... Oh, got cats in the way. These are cats. Uh, they might not look like it. Uh, unfortunately, we might need to attack them. If they don't move out of the way. Sorry. Or was that a dog? Okay. It looks like it was a dog. The cat and dog sprites are not as distinct as you would think they would be. Okay. So we're going to go back through um, these crypts and we can get, take a shortcut to one of the magic shops and um, like in many places we're gonna we're gonna see if there's something good to steal otherwise we're just gonna break in and um, uh, open things up and rifle through them but if there's something good, we'll take it. Uh, and I don't know, we might have some gold to buy some like fun spells too. Because uh, one of the other things we have in the randomizer is that we uh, there's a setting where you can unlock uh, spell requirements. Because there's a lot of the best spells are hidden behind like high levels, which take a while to get. Oh, in the magic shop, we got the spell that in the base game you buy from this very NPC who is right there. <laughs> um, do we need any? Uh, I don't think so. No, we've got plenty to cast what we're gonna need. Like, 
you might get to level four, like in a speed run. In a randomizer, you might get to five, maybe six, but like you're you're never gonna get to eight. <laughs> so we have an option to unlock spells. Oh, I don't have any money anyway. All right. So with dispel field, we have all the spells that you can possibly need. So of all the games, all the spells in the game, um, only two are required to beat the game. Um, and we're going to use the other one in just a moment. Because um, we're going to go into the Lyceum here. Not here. This is the building next to the Lyceum. The Lyceum is um, a big library. Actually, we're gonna see if there's anything good for it. Uh, the goal of this rando is to throw a book into the void. Um, but to do that, we need two lenses, um, eight moonstones, and a vortex cube to store them in. And so um, we're a good uh, deal on our way there. Uh, but now we're going to go down to the library and we are going to see what is hidden down here. Um, there's an energy wand, which is not like a progression item, but they are very useful. They're like, uh, they're weapons that are quite powerful, but like many things in the game, um, have a chance to break every time you use them. But um, these ones, uh, but they seem to usually last longer than like invisibility items. So we didn't get anything super good down here, but we got that energy wand, which is going to be useful if we run into more trouble. Uh, so we got these library chests and that one. Uh, we can now go back to the area we were just in. Uh, once we get into the right position. Oh, uh, nope. In this case, they are actual physical lenses. <laughs> and they will be used to help the humans and the gargoyles read a book um, slightly before we throw it into the book. Please, G Lens is my father. Just call me Gargoyle. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna. Oh! Okay, so one of the. These are some of the many fields that you can dispel with a dispel field spell. Uh, but I'm the only one alive, aren't I? So I can just use a violet potion which increases your armor, but also like makes you impervious to certain types of fields. Oh, and I'm gonna get in here and Penumbra is asleep anyway. Uh, whoever you are. Okay. Somebody's, uh, let's see if we can survive this attack. Defeated. We can check an item while we're here at least. Just gold. Uh, so, the in-game way to find the time is to find a clock or a sundial. And I will tell you what time it is. Um, if the base game time advances one minute per set, uh, the randomizer has options. We're currently um, at um, one minute per, for every two steps, which is actually what it is in the PC version. Um, the foes are too near. What if we come back here? Uh, uh, one of them being 
Dagger Island. So Dagger Island is an island just north of here where the Shrine of Honesty is. And if we take a little trip around, and we'll, it's been a while, but we'll get to hear the fun boat song for uh, a few seconds at least. Yes, oh, what a treat. This is really, you know, Speedrun Ragnarok is no stranger to Ultima at all, and and I've been on the mic for many an Ultima game now, and I gotta say, this one's really making me want to start playing it. Yeah. Uh, certainly can be a fun time. Uh, I believe we're around the mountains. We will see. I had to I pulled up a, my, one of my maps here just to see. Okay, and this is where Bon lives. Um, Bon is asleep, but if we go in their basement, they have lots of treasure. Some cheese. And then we got a couple locked chests. Let's see what they locked up today. Some gold, that makes sense. And the 3x crossbow. Um, which shoots three crossbow bolts instead of one. However, in Rando, we call it the money bow because it is the most valuable item in the game. <laughs> like the most expensive? Yes. That's awesome. So, uh, that will get us a good pile of cash at some point. Uh, let's see here. Where is a good place to go from here? We can go to the Shrine of Spirituality and we'll take a ladder that was added in Rando. Because in the base game, the only two ways to get to that shrine are to use the moon orb or to use a moon gate when um, the correct moon is the at the highest position in the sky. Um, so in Rando, um, there's an option because there's an option where you can take the moon gate, uh, the moon orb out entirely from the game and eliminate that fast travel possibility altogether. And so uh, we made a way so that you can sail there as well. So we're going to sail down to the town of Empath Abbey. And uh, we can get some items here. We're going to take a quick detour. Uh, so in here, this is like the morgue. Um, and it's a good place... Um, or some light grave robbing, like we like to do. And it's not considered stealing, uh, which is always nice. No, it's not stealing if it's just a little grave robbing as a treat. Yes. So, it's trick-or-treating, basically. Yeah. So that's, that's typically a good place to find a, a few spell ingredients, is just what we got there. We got the uh, Rune of Sacrifice, which will get us another item check. Um, and I've mostly not been using the hints, um, but, uh, there are some hints in the game. This one here says the Rune of Sacrifice may be in a house or shop, which is literally the item we just got. <laughs> and it was indeed in a house. So if we go down into the castle here, uh open this chest and find the rune of compassion that is all of the runes um, and a appropriate for uh, Halloween times uh, just south of here uh, let's go this way there we go it is a cave that has an item in it called spider cave it is where the spiders live. And of course the enemies will be randomized under these, this flag set. Um, but normally, um, when you 
come down here, there are spiders. Gold miner. Uh, and this here is Blood Boss, which is one of their reagents, but in, when it's not randomized, that is uh, spider silk. Which seems appropriate. Uh, we're gonna talk to not the last companion possible, but the last uh, companion that we start with normally in the base game, the Bard Yolo, who lives in a cottage in the woods, uh, just south of here, uh, with his uh, talking horse companion, like you do. Yolo's place also has some reagents sprinkled about, usually. Uh, let's see here. If we go up here, there's Yolo, the bard. And here is Smith, the horse. And uh, so if you talk to Smith, they say, Oh, I've got a, something important to tell you. It's a clue about how to beat the previous game. And oh, he's so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and in Randomizer, he'll also give you a hint to an item. Um, uh, but um, at many times it is the case, by the time you get here, that um, you've already found that item. So he is very appropriately giving you a hint to a thing you've already done. Just like in the base game. Uh, let's see if we can use this room before we get attacked. Grapes. Okay. So, uh, I think because... You have to meditate at it. I believe since we've cleansed that that shrine by using the rune on it. Um, now, when we go back there, the um, enemies will be gone, which is nice because there's a town next to here called Cove, and there are a couple items in Cove. Ah, uh, yes, we did run into Smith. Smith told us the uh, uh, all about how to beat Ultima Five. Uh, and oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I forgot to check what Yellow had. A green potion, which will um, poison. Uh, you can throw it on the ground, and it will poison anyone that's within like. Uh, one block of it, even if it's yourself or allies. So. <laughs> oh. Now I know that his name is Eolo, but yeah. it's like, but it's Yolo. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so this here was added for the rando, a potion vendor. Partially because it gives us another reason to use one of the best songs in the game. So let's buy a couple violet potions because they can be useful. And then they'll give you a hint as well. Moonstone of Spirituality may require using a switch. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. But first, we're going to head in here. And we're going to not steal something because there wasn't anything good to steal. We'll go to uh, Minic. Oh, okay. Let me think. Let's go to. We have, we have to go back to pause now that I think of it. 
Um, and then we can go to Minic and get our hot air balloon sorted. Uh, so we're going to do some, a little bit of walk in here. So if you've got um, any announcements or donations, uh, now would be a good time for it. Sure, absolutely. I just want to plug my favorite thing to plug during Speedrun Ragnarok, which is our line of merchandise. Remember, all sales from any of the t-shirts, sweatshirts, tote bags, and the like that you buy is going to go straight to take this, just like any of your donations would. But in this way, uh, you get a fun little clothing item shipped to your house, you know? So as per usual, we have the light and dark colored um, Speedrun Ragnarok logo, but this year we've also got some really cute new stuff that kind of mario kart aesthetic logo with the colorful stripes and the adorable little doodles um we've got available in t-shirts sweatshirts tote bags in addition to the main logo um i'm in love with the pink one that's my favorite speedrun ragnarok item that i look forward to wearing every year um so yeah please feel free to check it out i see somebody just dropped the link in chat so don't be shy head over there and pick something out cute for yourself especially now that it's getting cold So we are going to get a bag made from that silk uh, cloth that we got earlier. Um, and that is the bag for our hot air balloon. Uh, because we have some balloon plans um, that we've been meaning to use. It's, okay, you got that. Let's, can I take it? No, let's get, let's offload some equipment here. On our friends. Uh, we can take that and that. Uh, I'm gonna need that shortly. Take that and a loot and all that. That should be enough. So now we've got that in our pocket and we can head on to the town of Minic and we're gonna get our last component we need for the hot air balloon which is a basket um, so that we have somewhere to sit because this hot air balloon can carry up to six people. It doesn't look big enough to do that, but apparently you can do it. Uh, I got some spiders here just hanging out, chilling. Apparently not too concerned with us. Uh, let's. Now that I think of it, I think I need to sell some things because otherwise I will not have enough money because the basket costs like 300 gold. But that 3x crossbow is worth 2300, almost 2400 with our current karma level. Uh, I'm going to be careful not to sell the things that are very useful, but we'll sell just about everything else. broken now we have 4300 gold uh, yes this is on the Super Nintendo version um, which is um, actually fairly faithful um, there are some things that um, they weren't able to do either because of like memory constraints or because of like, you know, like Nintendo things. Um, uh, so, um, the, I think the, the PC version is recommended most for like the kind of story and the full like gameplay and stuff. But the Super Nintendo version is very good for speed running and for the randomizer as well. But um, super in there's some misleading information, um, some various sites about um, some differences in the speed and the Super Nintendo version that um, don't actually aren't <laughs> like uh, it's not as limited as some people say it is. But there are a lot of ports of Ultima Six to various systems that were out at the time. So if we give this Cyclops a fish, um, he'll
he'll give us a moonstone, apparently. Which is one of the things we're after, so we'll take it. This is an amazing trade offer. <laughs> yeah, in the base game, you just get a key. <laughs> and it's not even a key that you need. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the, the, I see somebody mentioned the FM Towns version in chat, which is the version that has full voice acting. Uh, I believe mostly by the developers of the game. So we're going to flip a switch there to unlock a door underground here. And this is where we would normally get the uh, vortex cube that we got earlier. But today, there could be anything. Um, and so normally, that Cyclops would give you a fish, which is how our, you give them a fish, and you would get a key, which is how the game expects you to get through this door. But of course, um, we have um, bigger, much louder keys um, that go boom and open doors for us. Oh, loud key. You've never failed us yet. And what we find is a crossbow bolt. <laughs> so not exactly what we were hoping for. go to uh, here so there is a like a mage that lives out in the woods um, that is much easier to get to when you can fly um, and actually has some of the like cheapest options for spells and things but also, you can only get in there when you have certain spells already. So, uh, I guess in the base game it could be somewhat useful because um, multiple characters can cast spells. But, um, in speedruns and randomizers, it's not really worth it to use more. Um, but you need unlock and a spell field to get in here. So, they thought they had it very well protected, but... Then we came around and uh, showed the weaknesses in their defenses. And they did all that to hide some grapes and a ring of regeneration, which will heal you every step you take. Um, but we can buy some cheap reagents, which is always good. And the thing I always forget to do that I'm doing now is see if they complain that I can't hold things. Okay. Um, because often I will think I purchased a whole lot of stuff and found out that I was at my carry capacity the whole time. Oh man, so you just <laughs> click through so fast not realizing you're not actually purchasing them? Yeah. So we're gonna buy a few extra spells too, like you can buy the uh, Mass Protect, which will cast Protect on everyone and make it so that they don't get poisoned or hurt by traps. Um, regular protection and mass invisibility which is a big one because you can use one spell cast to make your entire party invisible for some random amount of time that may be useful or maybe not um, oh looking at our inventory reminded me that we picked up sherry a very long time ago and so let me mark off Nicodemus here, who is this mage here, um, but we are going to uh, go to the town of Shalom so that um, Sherry can get out and spread her legs a little bit, and uh, cause she's been sitting in our bag the whole time. She's just a little pocket mouse, you know? Yeah, so she probably wants to get around and walk around and stuff, so... Um, We'll do that in a sec here after we uh, barge into somebody's house like you do in RPGs. 
mag unlock their magically locked chest and see what's inside. Just some gold. So now we're going to go up to the tavern. And I believe the background here is that there was like a bar fight. And for some reason the rune was out and about. But it um, got uh, like kicked into uh, this hole in the wall. Which is only large enough for a mouse to go through. And it has the Moonstone of Humility. Which is one of the items that we need to beat the game. Uh, yes. Hey, we're really close to getting them all now, huh? Yeah, yes. Oh, I went to the wrong. There we go. Yes, we can check. I have six listed on my tracker. Let me see if that is accurate. That seems to be accurate. I'm going to double check that I don't have anything hiding in my bag. Because um, the thing with the chaotic inventory management sometimes is that um, you can have things that you don't know that you had. Uh, we are currently missing just two moonstones. Uh, let's see. So that is that. We checked those. Uh, did we get a book earlier? There are two book rewards as well. But it looks like we haven't gotten one of those books yet. Uh, let's see where we can go now. We can... Uh, did we... Oh, I didn't mark. Okay, well, let's go to the Gargoyle World. We haven't been there yet. So this is the Gargoyle World. And uh, there's a lot of volcanoes out here, uh, which isn't great because they can randomly erupt and cause a lot of damage to your party. Um, but we'll also see, I don't know if we go across one right now, but in a moment we will see what is happening to the Gargoyle world. And um, it's not good. Here's Belen, who is a gargoyle. And if you know the Gargish language, which we learned earlier from a scroll, um, it'll join your party. In this case, just a health potion. Uh, I guess we'll take that anyway. Um, and we'll, we'll say adieu to. Oh! for now. Um, Belam is the one character that you have to say no to at that dialogue to have them leave your party. <laughs> Everyone else you say yes. This is Captain John who um, the song that when uh, you go in the boat the song that plays is called Captain John's War Fight and this is that Captain John. Oh my gosh he's the composer. <laughs> Oh, we're in the presence of a celebrity! <laughs> so normally he gives you the Gargish text that tells you how to speak Gargish. In this case, he gave us a Moonstone, which is the second to last Moonstone that we need. Uh, and then he says, hey, take Belem with you. If you take Belem, then the Gargoyles won't attack you on sight. Uh, which can be useful in the base game. Um, but, of course, um, most of the enemies in this area probably won't be gargoyles. Uh, we're gonna have to take a nap here in a minute because, uh, we need to talk to Valkadesh, and Valkadesh is almost certainly sleeping. Uh, yeah, well, let's take a look at my... up at eight. Okay. So we're gonna pass.
pass some time through the night here uh, because uh, depending on the uh, NPC some of them have simple schedules where they like sleep and then they're at work or something um, and some of them have more complex schedules where they like, go to lunch go to dinner um, some of them take multi-day trips around the world we're gonna play the best song here oh i ruined it let me put the what button. happened um because i went back to the menu oh there we go so the only way to hear that song in game is by to go up to a xylophone and play it so this here That's is cool. a, is the gargoyle wor world literally being torn apart that is a void so that is what we we caused two games ago by stealing the cold X of ultra wisdom yeah, that's tough. You hate to see that. <laughs> this uh, is pretty advanced, like, for such an old game, to be able to, like, track all the characters, yeah. like, kind of schedules and stuff like that. That's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they're, um... So, as you can imagine, in the version where, um, any NPC can be anywhere in the game, um, all the things you need NPCs for... <laughs> You need to know the schedule of the NPC that they're replacing. So when you go into an area, um, some people could be in uh, like four or five spots, depending on what time of day it is. Uh, there's a, some NPCs that could be in completely different parts of the world, depending on what day it is. And so... Um, Uh, it can be uh, rather tricky. Let's see. Uh, we need to know uh, Max's name there. So that um, when we go up to this lens crafter, which we don't have the item for, but later, if we need that lens crafter, they will talk to us. Because there's a broken lens that you normally get from that museum. And then you, you go up to that lens crafter and they fix it for you. So, all there are powder kegs there today in this house. So we got Palam, museum chest. And then it's time for one of our favorite activities. A little grave robbing. Light grave robbing. Yep. Yes! <laughs> gargoyle style so here this little triangle on the ground has a hint the moonstone of humility is on an island i don't know if that's one of the, the one we need uh let's check and see if we have that one because that could be useful information indeed uh where are we nope we already have it Uh, yeah, I see some talk about the schedules in such a game. Yes, um, so the schedules are, they're also stored like fairly efficiently. And so they are, um, Squibs did a lot, of, did I think pretty much all of that work. Um, but they are like divided there are several places where it uses like three bytes to store like 12 values or something. And so, and they're split up like two bytes here, four bytes there kind of thing. So uh, back in, in the day, they got real creative with how they used um, storage and, and memory. That is the Moonstone of Spirituality, which, if I am correct, is the last item that we need. So let's take a look here and just confirm. We have eight Moonstones. We have the uh, two lenses. 
So the other thing you would normally need in the game is you would need to have done the gargoyle shrines um, and you would need to have talked to the um, uh, the shrine of the codex. I, I'm blanking on what the that shrine is called, but um, you go there and you get a quest, and then that there's a barrier here that gets unlocked. Um, we have an option in the randomizer to um, kind of skip that whole line so that um, there's a little less kind of like boilerplate things you need to do to beat the game. But we're going to place down a human lens. We're going to place down um, the gargoyle lens. And then we're going to take the vortex cube, which has all the moonstones in it, and we're going to put it on the codex. And this is going to be time. And then we're going to get a cutscene here that's going to um, talk about what's happening here. So Lord British shows up from a moon gate and with the mage uh, Nistal and he's not too happy with this. He's like, we did a lot to get this book here. Um, what, what are you doing with it? And so we kind of like take that heat, that lens and we say, hey, just trust us, it'll be okay. And then we see the, the book floating in the void here. And now the gargoyles show up. And they're pretty mad too. Because um, they're like, hey, like you stole our book and now you're throwing it into the void. And we're like, hey, take this lens here. And so now they can both read the book and see that it basically it tells them like to get along. And, but, as I like to say, they took a look. It was in a book. A reading rainbow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> GG. <laughs> and of course, um, the uh, nothing bad ever happens again. They get along. There's certainly no sequels to this game where things go sour again. <laughs> so uh, that's Ultima 6 Randomizer. Um, thanks for having me out. Um, if you're interested in the Ultima 6 Randomizer, um, it's, you can find it fairly easy on Google. Otherwise, if you go to any of the Ultima's leaderboards on speedrun.com, um, there's a link to the Ultima speedrunning Discord. And there's a section in there for the Ultima 6 randomizer as well. Um, so if you're interested in speedrunning any Ultima games or playing some, any randomizers, there's also a randomizer for Ultima 4 for the NES, and I believe the PC version as well. Um, so yeah, if you come to the Ultima Discord, we'll, we'll happily point you in the right di direction. Thanks for having me, and uh, um, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Absolutely. GG again. Thanks for showing off the really fun game. Like I said, that even kind of interested me in finally getting to play Ultima after seeing it so many times on this marathon. I just wanted to wrap up that we did just recently get in a $20 donation from Margaret Ann, who says we can't pet kitties without cat cam, and we can't get... Oh, I can't read. At any rate, she wanted to support Take This, and $20 went towards that apple hat for Little Kitty Big City. Thank you so much for your donation, Margaret Ann. <laughs> Cloudy Shoot, thanks again for showing off that awesome game. Folks, don't go anywhere, because after this quick break, we're just coming back with even more super fun RPGs, um, supporting, raising more money for Take This, and looking forward to lots of great games the rest of the day. Alrighty, so please stick right with us, and we'll be back soon. <laughs>